Welcome to the Tuesday night broadcast of Everlasting Gospel Kingdom Ministries. Uh, this is uh, Keys to the Kingdom on Tuesday night Bible study. We praise God for another opportunity for us to gather together around the Word of God. We've got another exciting teaching for you tonight, praise God. We hope you're going to be blessed by it. And we're going to jump straight into it, praise God. It's a continuation teaching. We're going to jump straight into it. Uh, after we we uh, have a word of prayer. So uh, call up uh, <laughs> a friend. I guess we used to say that when we were doing radio. Uh, but um, uh, 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 subscribe, comment, and, <laughs> and uh, uh, again, I hope that we're going to be a blessing to you tonight. So let, let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you and I praise you and I worship you. I magnify you, exalt you, extol you, love you, honor you, worship you. You are the Lord God of all salvation, and I praise you for that. I thank you for this another opportunity to be with your people. I pray that you would bless somebody, heal somebody, deliver somebody on tonight. Give us a realization, a great revelation, insight, dear God, on how to continue to walk with you in our lifetime. We give you all the honor and the glory and the praise in advance. Holy Spirit of God, we declare that we can do nothing without you. Give us wisdom, sir. That the spirit of your the spirit of prophecy and the apostolic anointing uh, move mightily uh, uh, through the teaching tonight thereby helping somebody. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, sir. In the name of Jesus, we say amen and amen. Hallelujah to God. Praise God. Aren't you blessed tonight? Praise God. If you're not blessed tonight, praise God. I know uh, uh, one that can bless you thoroughly. It's our Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we are going to do a continuation teaching tonight. We started uh, some some weeks ago talking about something called as above, so beneath. Uh, as it is above, so it is beneath. And uh, we've been, uh, we're on the, the, today will be the fifth, uh, the fifth uh, session and uh, uh, we call it part five. Praise God again. As above, so beneath. So we 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 want you to glory to God. Let me see this. We want you to praise God. Get a pen or pad because we're going to teach some things that praise God and be. And I'm sure you'll remember them more if you write them down. If you don't write them down, well, you can come back and always listen. And as you come back and listen, re-listen to the teaching, you can gain more and more and more. We see ourselves as a Bible teacher, and uh, 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 we'll be pulling out things from the Scripture that will help us to understand uh, different things that we're involved with in life. <clears throat> Specifically, we've been talking about Again, as above, so beneath, or as it is in the spirit dimension, so it is in the natural dimension. And we've been talking about um, uh, 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 many uh, facets of the spiritual kingdom that we pull from the word of God. Um, we've been talking about the prophetic aspects, aspects of the scripture. Uh, we sh we've been speaking mo mainly to uh, an issue of the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when, whenever anybody brings up the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ, you, you almost narrow down your, your, <clears throat> excuse me, your audience. I remember being in the um, presence of a, a great elderly brother. He, he was, uh, I won't talk about what denomination he was, but he's been a pastor for over 50 years. And we got to talking, and, I, and as we were talking, he believed that the resurrection of Jesus, the virgin birth, and all of those things were symbolic, that they were not things that really did happen. And so I bring that up to say, if I started to talk about uh, the virgin birth 
or the resurrection and the ascension as something that was real and not just symbolic, then I would lose uh, him and his congregation, so to, so to speak, because they didn't believe in the, the virgin birth, the resurrection, or the ascension. And so if you don't believe in, in the ascension or the resurrection, which, I, again, a, a large part of our teachings will be coming from, then... Um, that it's probably that much of what we're going to say might not appeal to you. Um, the, 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 the basis of, uh, and I think we taught this already, the basis of the book of Revelations itself, a book of the Revelation, uh, comes from the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ. We dealt with that uh, pretty strong last week. I'm not going to try to deal with it again. Uh, but we dealt with that pretty strong last week. But again, you have to believe in the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ in order to go to the next level with us or with me uh, regarding some of the things that I'm attempting to teach. Now, so prophetically, we talked about uh, in the we talked about three things. We talked about uh, things that have been. Uh, uh, things that we are now seeing in the world, and then we 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 said we talked about the 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 why now. Why are we seeing these things now? And then we we also said we want to talk about when we get to it. What now or what next? Now the reason we need to understand uh, these things. I think we had the. Uh, the thought that uh, Russia <clears throat> and the Ukrainian attack and the, the possibility of uniting with China, uh, that what we were seeing was either the beginning or the coming together of the prophetic scriptures in the book of Ezekiel, dealing with Gog and Magog, or not. And I, I said, I don't know if we are because... In the book of Revelations, uh, it says that Gog and Magog will come after the thousand years of the millennial reign. And so unless there were two uh, times that Gog and Magog would unite themselves and go down uh, 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 to conquer uh, in, in that area, then this wasn't the actual depiction of, of that particular of fulfillment of that uh, scripture coming to pass. So the, the why now, uh, many, in terms of what we were seeing, uh, in happening in the world, the war and all those things, the why now many people, many of the, the, the in the body were saying it's because of Ezekiel prophecy, the Gog and Magog, the coming together of that. But, well, then we have to answer the question again of Revelations, I believe it's chapter 20, but Gog and Magog coming after the thousand years. So the why now is significant for us to properly and again, accurately represent God concerning the prophetic uh, uh, and apostolic uh, 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 relating of the scripture. So we'll talk more about the why nows, but again, I want to deal a little bit more with the now, what we're seeing, and and um, uh, 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 and then I'm going to mix in some of the, when I talk about the now, I'm going to mix in some of the why now. Why are we seeing these things now? And we're going to be pulling most of these things from the book of the Revelation. All right, so we had this idea uh, we talked about Jesus uh, last week, and we talked about Jesus in the now. Jesus in the now. We knew what he was in the days past. He was a man who who lived to 33 years old. He was hung on a cross, crucified, and then he was buried. And according to the scripture, he arose on the third day. Now, uh, 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 so we say that's the Jesus we can say we had now within the last uh, uh, little over. 
over 2,000 years. That's the now, the now Jesus that we representative, uh, that we represented. Uh, uh, but, but, uh, and I won't say the now, or that's the Jesus that was. Because if we believe in the resurrection, and if we believe in the ascension, we dealt with all this last week, we believe that Jesus has moved into another dimension of his existence. He's no longer the, 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 the human being who had flesh on so that he could be killed for the for the for the uh, as a perpetuation for humanity that's not who he is now he's ascended to another another level and uh, uh, uh and that level that he's ascended to according to the bible uh is is a is a level and a dimension uh, of another um another uh, 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 dimension or level of working on behalf of humanity. He was sent into the world to work the death, burial, and resurrection. He was sent to work the cross. And then after he fulfilled that work, he was he, he ascended into the heavens. And now the Bible here in the book of Revelations, the first chapter and the second verse, say God sent him, sends him again to his service. God wants the servants now to pick up and uh, God gives Jesus the revelation and he wants the servants of Jesus, the servants of God to know the very thing that Jesus know. Everything that Jesus know, the father wants the servants to know. Uh, he sends he sends Jesus now back to teach and to uh, uh, in the form of the angel of the Lord. You can read these yourself in the first uh, three or four verses of the first chapter of the book of Revelation. God gave Jesus the a, a revelation and then sends it and then Jesus sends his angel to John and John begins to write it and give it to the church and whatnot. All right. So the, the thing that, so the now Jesus that we have seen, the Jesus that we have seen was a Jesus that is in the second and the third chapter of the book of Revelation. Now this is very important uh, because uh, again, some people see um, some people see this this just as a, a word that was written to uh, the people back two thousand years ago. When we say it, we're going to do this in context. Uh, we, that that is who was speaking and who were they speaking to and when did they say it and where did they say it and we use all of that information to to. To come up with uh, uh, an understanding of what we think that the, the scripture is saying, and <clears throat> usually the rule of context <clears throat> will that is is what we call that, and that's how we come to a place of of, of examining, uh, and that's an, an, another word that we use that in the theological community is to exergete. The, uh, uh, we when we try to understand what it was that was really being said or what was really being taught uh, uh, we began to examine those verses through uh, 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 this idea of context who was speaking who was he speaking to where was he speaking when was he speaking all of those things will give you some some understanding of 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 the, the the background and the surroundings of what is being said. Well, the, I'm I'm not going to go into all of, all of those things. The the one thing I will go into in terms of how we will be dealing, how I will be dealing with this these these chapters of scripture when we start looking at the the the, the present day makeup of Jesus, because because uh, 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 that's what we're going to see, and, and, and what I'm going to be dealing with is that. This is a, a revelation. It is a prophetic word that God is giving to Jesus. God gave to Jesus 
of things which must shortly come to pass. Things which must shortly come to pass. So it's a prophetic word. It's not a word given to a, a people on a one-time basis where God just speaks to uh, uh, other people. It's, it's, it's a word that will be a prophetic word to the entire church throughout the ages that the church will, will be in existence. So when you start looking at the, the, the revelations, the end of the chapter uh, of one and then the chapter two and chapter three specifically, you're going to have a, a, a situation where uh, Jesus now, who said he would build his church, he starts, we see him walking uh, and, and through, the different, through the church and building the church. And he gives us vital information in the building building of the church. Now we can see this in one or two ways. We can see this as Jesus is Jesus built uh, by dealing with only the churches that were planted 2,000 years ago, or we can look at it as Jesus uh, uh, walked with those churches and he built those churches uh, prophetically, and as he built them prophetically, uh, 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 those churches, uh, 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 he was speaking to not only those churches back 2,000 years ago, but he was speaking to even the church of today. And uh, 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 that we know that the scripture will will, will, will show out. Yeah, uh, Jesus, the, the scripture says that John uh, uh, was talking and John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Some people will say, well, that was uh, on a Saturday or the Sabbath or that was on a Sunday. Uh, and, and then others like myself would say, no, he's talking about the day of the Lord. I was in the spirit on the, the Lord's day. And, and, and and again, uh, uh, when he's speaking, many of the things that we see that will begin to occur will occur, praise God, after the church age in an age that we call the day of of the Lord. And that's the time when, praise God, God would have uh, uh, allowed the word of God to be pre preached and taught and, and, and the body of Christ will have matured and are coming into this place where we are uh, 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 maturing in the things of God, maturing as the sons of God. We, we lay hands on the sick. We, we prophesy. We uh, uh, have words of knowledge, words of uh, wisdom and discerning of spirits. We, we operate in a special kind of faith. We operate in the working of miracles. We operate uh, in um, uh, divine healings, dreams, and visions. You see, a time period when the church really has grown up. The Apostle Paul taught in the book of Ephesians that God was sending in helpers, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, until we all came to the unity of the faith, to the mid of the statue of a perfect man or a mature man operating through Jesus Christ. This is the information that are out there. This is the books that are out there. The maturing, the matured body of Jesus Christ has come uh, 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 to pass. And so this has taken place not in a day. It didn't, didn't happen on the day of Pentecost. And, and on the day of Pentecost was the outpouring of the helper, the Holy Spirit. But then, praise God, over many years, the, 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 the body of Christ has been shaped and, and molded and taught and grown up. And we have, uh, uh, we have matured. We are what Jesus uh, 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 planted and we are what Jesus uh, uh, matured and we we are what Jesus prophesied about, and we are what Jesus uh, 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 died for. He actually died for everybody, but we are a people now that's, that's looking to uh, uh, accept and grab a hold to everything that the Lord has released uh, 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 to humanity uh, 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 through his being uh, coming into the world, death, burial, resurrection, and Ascension. So if we looked at this Jesus, uh, the, the second and the third chapter of the book of Revelation, we see him walking in the midst of the church. Now I want to talk a, a little bit about now.
This is the Jesus we have, Jesus we have now. I, I, again, I have to talk uh, again to those that believe that Jesus ascended. Because uh, uh, when you get over to the fourth and the fifth chapter of Revelation, you're going to see one seated on a throne, and he has an he has an open book of instruction that he wants to give to uh, give. That he wants to give, and so this one seated on the throne depicts uh, the Lord. Lord in his ascension makeup. The Bible says God has uh, uh, caused him, uh, raised him up and, 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 and made him to be Lord of, in the things of heaven and of the earth. So we uh, believers believe he's ascended. He's alive. He's looking. He's listening. Uh, uh, Revelations 2 and 3 says he's walking in, in the midst of the churches. And he's, and he's walking in the midst of the church. He's, mat- he, he's, he's speaking to the church. He's admonishing the church. He's saying go left. He's saying go right. He's saying go straight. He's saying come up. He's saying many, many things. Now, I want to talk about in the now the things, some of the things he's saying to us that have come to this place. You know, uh, uh, I'm reminded of Moses and 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 Joshua and Caleb coming out of the, the uh, out of, of the um, uh, Egypt and across the Red Sea and through the wilderness and we know the story about how Moses Moses wasn't allowed to go into the promised land, but uh, Joshua and Caleb continuing to lead the people. Well, we get to a pl- certain place in the Old Testament book of Joshua, where Joshua comes to a certain place. And that this place, praise God, they, they're at the Jordan River now. And it's time either, and they have got to get across the Jordan to get into the promised land. Praise God Almighty. But Moses is is is, is, is no longer with them now. Yeah, I, I, I bring that up. I, I bring that up to say that they, here's a people who have come out of a situation, but now it's time for them to move into a situation, but they've got this Jordan in, in, in front of them. All of those things are symbolic. The road map uh, 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 of the journey, the, road, the, 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 the Old Testament gives us a, a road map of the journey. When you begin to research the different places that they went through from Jordan, to, from the wilderness to the Jordan, uh, over into the, uh, 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 Jericho and Ai and all these, it, it, it gives us a picture. So, uh, uh, but the, the thing that we see is this, is that after they came out of uh, uh, Jericho, excuse me, after they came out of the wilderness, we learned something. We learned something there now. Uh, uh, now it's time for them to go into the promised land. Uh, it wasn't the intention of God just to bring them out. Now, they could have stayed there on this side of the Jordan and never tried to go across onto the other side of the Jordan to enter into the, pr- the promised land. They could have stayed on this side of the Jordan and they could have just worshiped and sang and, and rejoiced and in the God who had bought them out of captivity, uh, the God who had bought them out of slavery, uh, 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 they 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 had they could have now said uh, just just uh, we can just camp right here for the rest of our lives and just worship and just praise God, but it wasn't the will of God just to bring them out. It wasn't the will of God. That wasn't the plan of God just to bring them out. It wasn't the plan of God just to uh, 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 bring them to a place where they could uh, uh, see where God had done a great thing and rejoice in this great God. No, it was the will of God to bring them out so that he could take them into something. Oh, come on now. Wait, wait, wait. It was the will of God to bring them out of something so that he could take them into into something. Oh my, I don't know why I'm getting a bulletin from heaven. Uh, uh, somebody <laughs> might be looking and saying, "What? The, listen, I, I've got to teach what I've got. Yeah, you teach what you've got. Praise God. Uh, I can't teach what you have. You might have more than me and I just can't, but but I'm going to teach what I got. Amen. I don't know where that came from, but it was, but anyway, let me continue. Praise God. Yeah, God brought them out of something to take them into something. His, it never was his intention to bring them out of something and to get them just to rejoice and shout 
and to be glad about coming out. It was the will of God to take them into something. The problem is, is this, that sometimes when you're in slavery, people feed you. Oh, yeah. When you're in slavery, people tell you what time to get up in the morning. When you're in slavery, people tell you how to do this and how to do that, how to raise your children, how much education you can have, how much money you can have. People tell you all of these things when you're in slavery. And but when you come out of slavery, it becomes on it comes on you now. Nobody's going to tell you if to, if you need to get up in the morning. Nobody's going to tell you how, how to raise your children anymore. Nobody's going to tell you uh, 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 if you should say yes and follow God uh, uh, wholly anymore. Now it's all up to you. Oh, glory to God. Now it's all up to you. So here they are. They get to this place now and it's time now to move in. It's time now to move in. Now there's a different set of expectations. Uh, there's a different set of expectations <laughs> from what's over there versus what's over here what's <laughs> from what's in the, uh, on this side of Georgia uh, compared to what's on the other side of the Jordan uh, there's a the, 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 the expectations of what I get over here is totally different from what I'll get over there now some people say well oh the Jordan is is deaf and it, 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 it is going down into deaf and and then coming up over Jordan is 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 uh, um, uh, uh, heaven. No, it's not heaven. It's t not talking about heaven. It's talking about coming out to go into something. And he wants us to, he wants us to, uh, 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 uh deal with that right now. <laughs> Uh, that we that there's a there's a promise of God. One time over in the book of the New Testament, uh, 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 the the scriptures taught to to the disciples, praise God, who Jesus had bought out of something. He had bought them out of a a, a, a certain way of thinking. He had sought them, bought them out of beginners' class. He had bought them out of uh, 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 what what just was originally given to them to bring them out. And Jesus says, "Now I'm going." away but I want you to go wait until you until the promise of the father is totally released how many of you know that what was on the other side of the Jordan was the promise of God that was still ready and waiting for them to move over into Jesus says go wait until the promise of the father is being released unto you now I don't know about you now but we can be satisfied with having and attain some things uh, satisfied with having a attain uh, coming out of some bondages uh, satisfied with, with having attained <laughs> Uh, uh, not being uh, subjugated to the opinions of many. We can be satisfied with that or, or we can look to see uh, if we can uh, understand that God has a promise uh, the, the, the subjugation of enemies, the, 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 the listening to the, those voices, the, the chains and all of those things and that existed they uh, uh, uh they they were against uh, they were a hindrance they were a burying they were a, uh, an attempt to stop you from getting to the promise everything that you've been to has been stopping you from getting to the promise now there is a promise of God that awaits the people of God now some people think that we've gotten everything already but you haven't gotten everything already now I want to talk about a few promises that are hanging out there in the now that 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 God the Holy Spirit wants us to move I won't get to talk about the why now maybe I'll talk a little bit about it I'm not sure but there's a few things, uh, promises that are hanging over in the book of Revelation. There's a promise of, of the Lord that says, that's how we know this is prophetic. There's a promise of the Lord that says, uh, 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 Jesus says, you know what? I'm going to cause you to eat of the tree of life 
again. You, and now, now many people relegate that to heaven, but how many of you know the tree of God, the tree of life was on earth, and the tree of life was, uh, was, uh, was, was when Adam and Eve uh, had their mishap, it was shut off from humanity. Uh, 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 it was, uh, they, 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 God didn't want them to eat of the tree of life because it would have had an, an eternal uh, a value and nature to it. It was a, a, a part of the Torah that 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 would have would have would have would have caused them to be uh, uh, moved to a, 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 some dimension that God says no they cannot be in their sins and eat of this it, it's, called, it's called the tree of life and God said from the beginning he says he had he said angels uh, to shield it and to guard it and to block it listen here's something that's hanging out there that's awaiting for people of God and it says it says that God says I'm going to cause you, the Lord says, if you overcome, if you, if you get to this place where you, you not just get to the Jordan, but you're moving over into the promised land, he says, I'm going to cause you to eat of the tree of life again. Can you imagine that? Can you, can you, have you ever thought about what that might be like and whatnot? It's not just when you get to heaven, but it's something you might say, well, well, that's not money. That's not a new car. That's not a new house. Let me tell you something. Every promise of God has the ability to create uh, uh, abundance. Every promise of God has the ability. It may come like a small mustard seed, but it has the ability to grow up into an orchard of fruit trees it may have it may come like a a single pearl in a field uh, but uh, because you recognize the value of 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 the of the promise of God you'll take the, everything you got and you'll spend it just to get that one little pearl because you know that it means everything it means everything to to, to grab a hold to it and whatnot so God says uh, you went in things in the now listen you hadn't been expecting it because nobody told you that it was for you uh just like nobody told you, praise God, that it was uh, uh, that God had some information for his servants, new information. Revelation chapter four says there's new information. There's information that's closed that God is opening and he wants you to partake of. Now, I, I, somebody said, well, well, I don't know about that, apostle. Listen, it's very important that you stay with the lights of God. Israel in the Old Testament many times stayed with the priesthood and so the priesthood went into the, the tabernacle, into the most holy, where the Shekinah might have been even met. But uh, they had when it doesn't matter if the Shekinah is being addressed without the commandment being kept. See, you got to have the light and the glory. You got to have the light and the power. And, and, and so here's, here's the Lord saying to us that I've got some news for you. I've got a, a revelation for you. I've got some insight for you. Did you know that over in Revelations chapter 10? Uh, the Bible says that praise God the, that 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 that, that, that there was there is a a, a word God J John John was said that a word came uh, 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 seven thunders uh, 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 uttered their voices and and John says that they, it was a it was a message and John says I was about to to write I was about to relate what the seven thunders were uttering but he said he says but the spirit of the Lord the angel of the Lord the Lord told him says now don't write them down uh, 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 they're not yet ready to so even in the, in the late in the game in the book of revelations late in the game there's still something God has for us that he strategically uh, 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 object he, he, he she strategically says I'll give it to you but you uh, have let me let me see who's gonna walk with me let's let me see who's gonna follow me let me see who's gonna hunger after these things now I'm not talking about you going to heaven. You can go to heaven, praise God, just by accepting Jesus Christ. That's got nothing to do with your works down here. That's got nothing to do with uh, 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 the, the rewards or the uh, or, or, or the, uh, the, 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 the 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 working together with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit to see people delivered. You can go to heaven and just be selfish. I know that's a controversial thing, but the blood of Jesus Christ is just that powerful to get you there. Amen. 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 My
might not get you as high as you want to go, but it'll get, it'll get you there. Okay, there's one, the, the tree of life. Another place he says, uh, uh, he says, a uh, uh, now promise that's available to us. He says, I'll give you hidden manna. Hidden manna. Now, manna is food in the Old Testament. When they were coming out, they left Egypt and they were going through the wilderness. Manna was a type of food that came down from heaven. Manna was a type of food that came out down from heaven. And, and Jesus says that, that listen, I, 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 in the now, in the, this day, there's a promise out there just hanging, just hanging, waiting on us to grab. He says, I'll give you hidden manna and is waiting on hungry, hungry souls or the servants of God. This is the, the word that God gave Jesus to give to the servants. This is this is a word that God gave Jesus to give to the God says, I'll give you mana, hidden mana uh, 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 that you can begin to eat of. I'm talking about heavenly uh, uh, bread, heavenly food, heavenly stuff. And I, I, I don't know if you, you, you want any of that or not, but this is this is sons of God, daughters of God talk. This is eagle talk. This is talk that, that, that for, for, for those that 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 that, that, that they, they want to operate as the as as that son and daughter of God light uh, 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 as Jesus. Up. He said, well, I don't need to be like Jesus. I don't need to walk like Jesus. Oh, you don't. You sure don't. And, and, and trust me. When we get to heaven, praise God, your rewards will reflect that. You don't need to be a servant of that caliber. You need to, you just want it to get in. You'll, 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 you'll get in, praise God. <laughs> Amen. I know that this is why some people say, Snooks, you try to be a little too uh, hard and whatnot. But I, I don't have time. I'm getting a little, little aged, so I have to kind of throw it out there, praise God. <laughs> Oh, he says, he says, uh, here's another promise. He says, he says, listen, I'm going to, I can even give you a crown of life. That's the same thing that the apostle James said in the, in that first chapter and the 12th verse of the book of James, he says, he blessed the person that endures. He said, when he has been tried, when he has been proved, when he's been validated, he'll be given a crown of life. This is talking about God will give you dominion in this present life. God. God will give you dominion. That's a promise that's hanging out there. He says, if you overcome, he says, I'll give you power over and in the nations. Did you know that, praise God, a man or a woman can be so uh, operating, so much walking with God that their influence can affect the nations? It's happened before. Their influence can affect uh, 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 all things going on around him. See, the difference in the things that have happened before is that men and women of God entered into things and didn't really know all of what they were entering into. They entered into them and they were, and, and, and as they entered into them, they just, you know, it, the, the blessing came, but they didn't know a lot about what they were entering into, into. We are now receiving the promises of God and we know what we are entering into. So many beautiful things that belong to us. Let me give you one more. Here's a promise that, that you really need to tie into. He says, Jesus says, he says, he says, uh, if you overcome, he says, I'm going to grant you to sit down in my, my throne as I have sit down in my father's throne. And that's a very powerful, a powerful uh, uh, thing for you to, to begin to walk into. And I, some people think that the greatest thing that they can operate in is a new, uh, a new trinket or a new this. And listen, God has some sons and daughters of God. Uh, 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 places for you to step into that's greater than anything that you've ever considered. Jesus says, I'll grant you to sit in my throne. That means that you, you'll be given a, a place of dominion and authority in life. I'll grant you to sit in my throne, even as I am seated or have been sit in my father's throne. Now that is powerful. Can you imagine? I know you can't. It, it's very difficult to imagine a person walking around, human beings walking around in that type of glory. Why Does God want human beings to walk around in that kind of glory? He wanted Jesus to walk around in that type of glory. And whether you understand it or not, Adam and Eve 
were very, very glorious. When God said, uh, uh, be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion, he wasn't saying just have dominion over your present surroundings. Adam was made in the image of God. God was an Elohim, and his God was an Elohim, which means that he was a Lord. He had dominion in many different domin- dimensions at one time. And God told the man, have dominion dominion in many dimensions at one time. Be like your father. Let me tell you something. Ain't nobody was created like a human being. Have dominion. Even an angel (laughs) didn't have dominion in many dimensions at one time. Even Satan didn't have dominion. In dimension, many dimensions at one time. So there's gifts in the now, the now, things that are just hanging out there waiting on the believer. But they belong to us. They belong to us. This is the now. They're necessary in the now. All of creation has been waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. I'm not talking about the the sons of God who drive up in a new car. I mean, uh, Elon Musk or Bill Gates could could top any car we drive up in. You know, uh, you go come up with you you come up with you in your rose and 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 one of those guys will come up in a flying car. <laughs> And what not? And I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, uh, <laughs> I'm not knocking the saints having great things and whatnot. But I'm saying creation is needs more than that right now. Why now? The creation needs more than just another trinket for us. The cre- we got to be in a, we got to survive, and I believe we will. But the cre- all, all these people who are, are flirting around with flashing their, uh, um, you know, their this and their that. Listen, God needs more than another big trinket right now. I mean, I won't say God needs more, but the society, the the, the world, and listen. If we don't wake up, we're going to see, praise God, that, that, oh, my God, the need is great. And listen, there's, there's this restraining force, the restraining force uh, that's in the world today. You put salt to preserve meat. You put salt to stop deterioration and, and uh, 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 rottening. And the Bible says, you are the salt of the earth and whatnot. The world needs more than just a few more trinkets. We, uh, 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 according to the scripture, we are uh, what the world has been waiting for. The Bible says that the the cosmos, the the, the cosmos is a place. uh, It's it's like uh, that's that has all kinds of trinkets all that cover it. And, 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 and I just want to say this last thing, this last thing that God does want to cover us with great jewels and, and, and trinkets. He wants to dress us up and parade us around or parade anyone around who will say God is God. He wants to do that. Yes. But here's what uh, I'd say to you. You say, why? I see what's happening now. I see, I mean, as, you, as you notice, I've been talking mostly to the sons and daughters of God. I haven't been talking about worldly events and a lot of uh, cha- chaotic things that are happening. I haven't been talking about that. I've been talking about the sons and daughters of God. What's Jesus like now and what he's bringing us to? Because it's only the Holy Spirit and the angels and the, and the power of God working in the people of God that are going to be able to restrain those things that are coming upon the earth. The earth, the earth needs more than just more of your trinkets right now. Let me pray with you, praise God. And as I pray tonight, I pray that you would ask God uh, for the more. You want to move with him. He, he, and I, God straightened me out one morning. He told me, he said, he said, he said, he said, Mike, he said, listen, uh, 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 I'm not quoting him verbatim now, but I'm just kind of my own <laughs> 
slang culture. <laughs> so he says, he says, my, he says, my uh, 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 surrender is done from the heart and not from the head. And, you know, many people think, oh, oh, I'm surrendered. I'm surrendered. There were people that fast and came to God and said, God, haven't we fasted? Didn't we, didn't we uh, uh, you know, yield ourselves to you? What, what's wrong with you? Why we don't see a blessing yet? And God said, yeah, but did you at all do it for me? Did you do it for me? Or did you do it so that your voice can be heard on high? Or did you do it so that you can have more money? Did you do it so you can have more popularity? He says, no, you didn't fast for me. He said, if you're going to fast for me, then when you're fasting, give your, give, uh, well, I'm not going to go into all of that. He says, uh, this is Isaiah, I believe it's, um, uh, you can look it up. Just look up the word fast and you get to Isaiah. <laughs> You know, the technology will take you there. Okay, here we go. So I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. And as I pray with you, I want you to grab a hold to some of these things that are available to us now. Now. Now grab a hold to some of these things. Oh, we need the brothers and sisters to grab a hold to some of the things now. And remember, it's the law and the commandment that was left. And it was given as a righteous thing in the old days, but when they left it, it was made a, made a curse. It is Jesus, the Logos, the Word, that comes to save us. Revelation 19 says, He's the Word riding on a white horse. It's coming after us. What happens when we reject the Word? What happens when we reject the Word? Father, I thank you for your people. I thank you for the, the teaching on today. I thank you for those that will get it. And I thank you for those, God, that that will. Uh, uh, I thank you for those that will get it now, and I thank you for those that will get it uh, uh, in the days to come. I pray that you would bless tonight, heal tonight, deliver tonight, help tonight, and God will give you all the praise. If they've not, if they're not saved, I hope that we've said something to help them to know that it is you that is the lover of our souls. We bless you, we honor you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, once again, we say <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. Wow, I just went on a trip and I'd pull myself back in. <laughs> I don't know what the world, uh, sometimes I'm going out there and I just say, oh my God, I, I see myself out there sometimes. I say, wow, let me try to get back to the middle of the road. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So uh, remember, praise God, on Sunday mornings, every Sunday mornings at 9, every Tuesdays at 7, that you're watching, doing it now, or watching now, we're on at 7 p.m. Sunday mornings at 9 every Sunday, and then Monday nights at 6, excuse me, 7 p.m. You'll see the dial-in number, 7, the dial-in number, 774-267-2796. And this is the uh, intercessory prayer with Pastor Elaine Brown on Monday evenings. And then we have Apostles Fred and Melinda Bell, who are also on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Uh, and uh, 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 they are also on uh, at Wednesdays at 7 p.m. where they do a fine teaching uh, of the Word of God. The dial-in number is 617-941-8343. These are our affiliates, uh, persons that we are affiliated with who we are very confident uh, in their competency in terms of uh, relating the Word of God. Uh, we have Pastors Ephraim and Carol Sartoris uh, in Georgia. And um, they are on in the, a 3D Bible study at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard on uh, uh, Thursday evenings. You can reach that, that Bible study at 339-209-6273. And uh, there's others also um, that, that uh, we have. If you have a desire to know more about them, praise God, you can always contact us in Jesus' name. Remember us in your giving. Praise God, uh, uh, and you see the PayPal and the um, the, uh, 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 the 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 Cash App uh, coordinates on the screen. And I, and I know that as you decide to give, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So once again, we praise God for another opportunity. Um, 
We're going to be out of town on this Sunday. I'm not sure if we'll be live on the air. We'll try to get a broadcast in between now and then. But if we don't, praise God, we'll see you, praise God, on next Tuesday again. Uh, we say be blessed. Keep us in your prayers as we pray for you. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name. And remember, you are the apple of God's eye. God has spoken a word concerning you. That which is going out of his mouth will not return unto him void. It's going to accomplish the thing that he sent it to accomplish. Be blessed. We'll see you next time. In Jesus' name, shalom.